So what is an outpost? An outpost is a square in your opponent's territory where you can place your piece and it would be defended by your pawn, but it also cannot be attacked by the enemy pawn. And a path is a way to get to that outpost. So we're going to look at some examples of how we can get to those outposts the fastest way possible and the safest way possible. And we're going to look at different examples of what the outposts can look like. So let's look at this pawn structure here. We have a square on C5 right in front of the doubled pawns. So very often an outpost would be in front of the doubled pawns because the pawns uh, have captured. So therefore, there is no other pawn that can chase away a piece from that square. Another outpost here would be a square on E6. So that square is defended by a pawn and no enemy pawn would be able to chase away a piece from there. So we have C5 and E6. What about for black? Where can black place their knight? If they had a knight on the board, it would be on E4. So E4 is protected by the black pawn and no enemy pawn can chase the piece away from there. Now, the square on C4 is not an outpost because it can be chased away by the pawn moving to B3. All right, now let's look at some examples. So here we see that there's a very nice square for the white knight on D5. However, the black knight is attacking that square. So we don't want to place our knight there right away and then trade the knights because we want our knight to end up there and for no one to be able to capture our knight. So what we're going to do is we trade our bishop for the knight on f6. Black will take. And then we place the knight on d5. Now, even though the knight and the bishop are both worth three points, in this case, the knight is stronger than the bishop because the knight is placed nicely in the center of the board. And he's attacking in all the directions on the into the black's territory, the white's territory, on the king's side, and on the queen's side. So in the center of the board, the knight is attacking eight different squares. Now look at this bishop here on f6. The bishop is very limited because he's blocked by his own pawns. Uh, the pawn on e5, the pawn on d6, they're all on dark squares. And when the pawns are on the same color as the bishop, then the bishop is limited. Bishop needs open diagonals to be powerful. So let's see. So after this, black plays rook to e8 to develop their rook. White plays queen d2 to develop the queen. And black plays b5. And white would play rook a to d1 to complete their development. So now, as we can see, both rooks are developed. The queen is developed. And the knight is very strong in the center of the board. A perfect outpost. Now, let's look at another example. So here, I'm going to flip the board. It's black to move here. And first, we always look for the outpost. And then we look for the path. Again, once again, uh, the path has to be a quick one and a safe one, right? So no one would be able to capture our knight as he's traveling to that square. So the outpost, maybe you have already noticed, is on F4. So as I said before, uh, a square in front of the doubled pawns is an outpost very often. Um no pawn can chase the knight away from there, and he's also nicely protected by the pawn on e5. So what is black going to do? Now, the path to get to that outpost is knight h5 and knight f4. Of course, knight d5 is not a path because it's not a safe square to go to. So uh, let's go with knight h5, queen e3. And knight f4. Notice, notice that after we put the knight on f4, we can easily maneuver our queen to the king's side and then threaten checkmate on g2. 
Uh, we can also do a rook lift and bring a rook over to the king side and attack the king on the open G file or the H file. So the knight is positioned perfectly on a four, also blocking the white queen. So let's see what happens after that. So white plays king to H1 and black brings the queen in, queen H4. Now white gets the rook over to protect the king and also get the rook over on the uh, open file and black does a rook lift. Rook g3, and now rook h6. So we see how in just a couple of moves, black's position has transformed into this powerful uh, checkmating attack. So white has to play h3 since black was threatening checkmate on h2. And of course, black captures the pawn, wins the pawn, and uh, black is winning the game. So all due to this beautiful outpost that the knight has found. All right, let's look at another example here. So this is very interesting. Uh, black has attacked the white knight on e4, and the knight has to run away. Now, many people would probably move their knight either to g3 so they can attack the queen, or they would move the knight to d6 to do a fork on the queen and the bishop. However, moving the knight to d6 doesn't actually accomplish anything because black could just simply move their queen back and defend the bishop. And if white wants to capture, black can just take back, trade the pieces, and white doesn't have any advantage there. If they try to attack the queen, well, it's just a one move threat. And after that, the knight doesn't have any good squares to go to uh, after the queen uh, moves away. So there's no reason to make this move. However, um, the, the right move would be to move the knight back to F2. So where is this knight going? Let's look for the outpost for the knight a beautiful square on e5 that is protected by the pawn and no enemy pawn can attack the knight there. So what is a path to get to that outpost? Well, we find the path. Well, there are a few ways we can find the path. We can move backwards from e5, so to g4, f2, and e4. That's one way to find it. Another, another uh, option is going back to d3 f2 e4 right so this just shows us where we can move our knight uh in order to get to that square um and another way of course is to think forward and that is to bring the knight over here g g4 and d5 um i like to think backwards about this plan it just uh, helps me easier to find the path this way all right so the move is knight to f2 so black tries to block this path over here on g4, but then, of course, the knight moves to d3. By the way, if black tries to block the other path, the d3 square, then the knight will maneuver through g4. So that's the benefit of having those two paths here in this position. If they block one of them, we use the other. So now let's see what happened in, in this game. h5, knight goes to d3. Black plays rook e8, and white positions their knight nicely on e5, having a centralized knight that is stronger than the bishop. So black plays bishop to a6, and now white can get the rook on the seventh. Now, we all know that rooks on the seventh go to heaven. Rooks on the seventh and second ranks are very powerful. They attack the pawns, they cut off the king, and... Uh, especially if there are two rooks on the seventh, then it's even more powerful. So let's see, black plays rook c8, and here the rook already can capture the pawn. Black also tries to activate their rook by putting it on the second rank. White plays queen of four, sacrificing their queen just for a moment, and then taking on g6 with a fork on the king and the queen. 
So that's a second pawn that white got to capture. So they get the queen back, rook checks the king, king moves away, bishop goes to f1, and now white wins the third pawn. So at this point, white is up three pawns or three points, and of course, white is winning the game, all due to the beautiful outpost that they found for the knight in the center of the board. And let's look at our final example. So here it's going to be white uh, finding the outpost and the path. And if we start looking into black's territory, which is above uh, fifth rank, including the fifth rank, we see that there are nice squares on d6 and b6. However, the d6 is the better square since it's positioned right in the center of the board. So that's where we want to put our knight. If we can place our knight on d6, no one would ever like that, playing black, having the enemy piece right in their territory. Okay, so uh, then we know we're doing the right thing. We're, we're doing really well. Now, let's see, how are we going to get our knight to d6, what would be the path? So we see one here going to b1, a3, c4, and d6. Are there any other ones? Let's look at this one, knight to e2, knight to f4. Uh, we cannot get to d6. No, doesn't work. Any other ones? It doesn't look like there are other paths to get to d6. Okay, so we could also look at it backwards, right? So going back from d6 to c4, then to e3, then to d1 and c3 if we move the rook, okay? But the, the, the e3 square is not available to us since the bishop is attacking it, okay? So we eliminate any other possibilities, and the one that actually works is b1, a3, c4, and d6. Okay, well, let's see what white does in this position. They play knight to b1. So in this case, moving the knight backwards is a good thing. All right, well, black uh, doesn't have too many good ideas here. So they play king h8. Uh, white plays knight a3. They just go back and forth with their king because there's just no way that they can improve their position. Knight c4, king back, knight d6, queen g6. Let's just see how white now will take advantage of this really good position that they have. They're going to play rook b1 because their plan is to open up the b file by trading the pawns. So black plays rook d7 and b4, a takes, rook takes. King g8. Now doubling up our rooks with rook d to b3. King running over towards the center. And now white wants to triple up on the b file. Queen d1. King back. Queen b1. f4. Rook takes. Queen takes queen. Just a trade. And finally, uh, the rooks trade and look at this the knight is much stronger than the bishop he's in black's territory he's attacking all the pawns he's attacking the king and at this point a white is up by two pawns on the queen's side there are also past pawns connected pawns <laughs> outside past pawns so these are very strong pawns. They're extra. And of course, white is winning all due to the outpost for the knight. So look for those outposts and look for those, those paths. How to get to the outpost the shortest way and the safest way. And see you at our next lesson.